So today we're going to be fitting up a prop shaft to the E30 build and also talking about possible combinations you can use. For those of you who are new and haven't been following along, the car is a BMW E30, a 1990 model coupe obviously, a 316i manual that had the M40 four-cylinder engine fitted from factory which I've recently swapped out to a 24-valve six-cylinder M52 B28 engine. If you're interested in seeing how I've actually got to this point, do make sure you look back on the previous videos to get caught up. Mounted to the M52 engine underneath the car, I fitted a Getrag 240 gearbox. Now, the four-cylinder E30s, including the 316, which is what this is, did come with a Getrag 240 as standard. However, I've opted to use the Getrag 240 that's from a 318 IS, uh, which is a very similar box, but it's just got a different length output shaft, which there's an impact on which prop shafts you can use. I'll go into more detail in a minute, but basically my main reason for switching to the 318 IS 240 gearbox specifically was to simplify which prop shaft I actually could use. So as you can see, I've got three prop shafts here today. All three of them are from E30s, all three of them from manual E30s, but quite obviously they're of three different lengths. This one is from a late model 325i. This one is from this car, so it's a 316i, the original one. This one is from an early 320i. I have ended up with three because my gearbox choice was quite up in the air for a while. I thought I was going to be trying to use the original Getrag 240 that came on the 316. However, plans changed when a 318 IS gearbox came up for sale cheap locally and I had to snap it up. First of all, we can see that the differential side halves of all three prop shafts are identical. It's just the gearbox side that varies in length. Theoretically, this means you can mix and match, but bear in mind that you never want to run an unbalanced drive shaft or you'll end up having a very bad time, apparently. All E30s have the same 10 centimeter spline section coming off the gearbox half where the center bearing mounts. So this does give you a little bit of flexibility on the, on the fitment when you're doing something custom, but obviously you want as much of the splines meshed as reasonably possible. Interestingly, the gearbox halves of these prop shafts vary in thickness as well as length. There are differences between the facelift and the pre-facelift, but from my research, thicker isn't necessarily better as apparently they switched to a thinner walled tube, which is why they made the diameter larger on the facelift ones. It's also worth noting that the centre bearings vary between facelift and pre-facelift cars. The mounting points under the car are different, so you need the correct centre bearing for your chassis. This is a 1990 facelift car, so the centre bearing fitted to this pre-facelift one would not work. So I'd need to swap this out. I'd need a facelift one like these two. I'll crack the tape measure out in a minute and we'll talk specifics on you know, the exact lengths of these prop shafts. However, in my specific situation, which just to remind you, is M52 swapped facelift E30 with the Getrag 240 gearbox from a 318 IS. It's very well documented online that I should be able to use a 325i facelift, thanks to the sensor bearing, prop shaft, and it should be a direct fit in this circumstance, and it should be perfect, which is very much why I opted to go for the 318 IS gearbox in the first place, because getting hold of a 325i prop shaft is relatively easy compared to some of the more unusual options. I've actually had these prop shafts on the shelf for a while waiting for the engine and gearbox to be fitted up which they now are so I can get under the car and find out if this 325i prop shaft is a perfect fit as promised to me by the forums. First thing I think I'm going to do is get under the car and measure the actual distance between the differentials input flange and the gearbox's output flange. The rubber flex disc Guibo is already in place, so I'll factor that in as well. That would fit up just between the gearbox and the prop shaft at that end. So let's get the tape measure and get under. Hundred and forty seven centimeters. Yeah. 
Right, so I've got all three shafts written up. I've written it into a, a bit of a table. It was quite awkward to do actually because the universal joints on the uh, differential side moves around a bit so it's hard to tell where it actually stops. And of course you've got the 10 centimeter splined area in the middle and uh, some of these are quite stiff so they're, they're hard to close up. I'm going to put this into a more sensible table in Excel so I can overlay it so you can see the actual measurements I got. But my advice is this. So the rear sections are all the same, completely unchangeable, there's nothing you can do about it. The centre bearing holes on the chassis is where it is, completely unchangeable, there's nothing you can do about it. So the centre bearing in the rear section is locked in, nothing you can do. So the only bit that really matters is the front section and whether that fits appropriately between the gearbox output flange and the centre bearing mounts. And the 10 centimetre spline section is actually not going to be very helpful to you at all. The only thing you, that is going to help you is the fact that there's a, about a 3 centimetre slotted mount on each of the centre bearings, pre-facelift and facelift, which gives you a little bit of mounting wiggle room. Judging by the measurements I've got, the 320i prop shaft front section is 1 centimetre too long. So once I've bolted the back and the centre bearing up, if this was a facelift centre bearing, which it isn't, I'd find that this shaft would not fit in the gap between the gearbox and the centre bearing mounts it, by one centimetre, which is very frustrating, but it is what it is. However, the measurements are showing me that the 325i one should fit perfectly as promised. So hopefully we'll find out that's really true in just a second. And obviously you can see straight away that the 316i front section is the longest of all three and not a hope in hell of it fitting between. Before I go ahead and get the spanners out and start trying to wrestle this on underneath the car, I should explain why this prop shaft actually looks brand new. It's because I sent it off to Dunning Fairbank Limited, which is a, a place that rebalances and refurbishes prop shafts and fits the centre bearings. Uh, you can find them on www.propshafts.co.uk, interestingly enough. That's why there's a very prop shaft shaped box next to these as well. Uh, the universal joints, both of them on this one when I received it, were really, really notchy. I deliberated about it for a while, considered what my options for replacing the UJs myself. But again, the staked, in a similar way to the, um, the steering linkage ones were staked, which was a real pain in the ass. And knowing this is going to potentially be spinning underneath the car at 6,000 revs, I didn't really want to take any chances. So I went ahead, sent it off to them, and now the, uh, both the UJs are really smooth. They've given it a paint job, rebalanced it, and fitted a new centre bearing. So it's good to go.
Right, so that's one in the diff side, but obviously with the wheels on the blocks, I can't turn the diff, so I can't access the others. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jack one wheel up, and luckily this is an open diff, so I should be able to do this. And that should enable me to, to spin this round and do the other three. And then there were two because the 325 i prop shaft turned out to be a perfect fit which i'm really happy about and um, hopefully i'm never gonna have to mess with it again because i sent it off for the refurb so it's looking really good there i got it all tightened up in the end it was a bit of a pain to do mostly because i've not raised the car high enough so i was stuck in a very tight gap it was like potholing bloody awful i've even put the heat shields on ready for the quite fiddly job of fitting all the exhaust clamps which have now turned up. I'll probably end up doing that off camera um, and I'll show you the result afterwards. But the next major thing I'm hoping to be doing, hopefully in the next video, is gonna be the intake manifold, which will put us at the point of trying to start the car, I think. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. I'm considering fitting an M50 manifold rather than the original M52 one as well, which should be quite interesting. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to give us a like if the information on prop shafts was helpful to you. Cheers. Mm -hmm.